All right. So my name is Kanek Fuentes. I'm from Georgia Tech. And uh, I'm going to be talking or describing some of the advances we have recently done through the last uh, year on developing low voltage, high performance, uh, organic and oxide, uh, semiconductor oxide thin film transistors. So first of all, um, I would like to acknowledge basically all the people, all, all the team that uh, has been working on this and the guys who actually have <coughs> done most of the work. Uh, first of all, uh, Dr. Sri Prakash Tiwari, um, Jumbe Kim, Sha Hong San, uh, that you know her, uh, some of you that have been long enough. She already graduated and moved uh, to Texas, so she's no longer with us, but she certainly had uh, some contributions in the last year. Uh, Dr. Uh, Sung Jing and uh, William Poskabash, obviously our uh, boss, uh, Bernard Kipling. So today I'm going to be talking about thin film transistors. So I figure since uh, there is very different backgrounds in this audience, I will start describing what a thin film transistor is. So this is going to be very short. It's not going to be in depth. But basically what you have in a thin film transistor is uh, it's, it's just a switch. It's a, an electrical switch where you control the current that flows through a semiconductor channel okay, from drain to source by applying a gate bias. So what happens is. Um, you apply a voltage between the source and drain, so there is a potential uh, for carriers to move across the channel, but that channel is not open until you actually apply a voltage to the gate. So depending on, this, on the, on the um, electrical nature of the semiconducting uh, um, channel, uh, whether it's, it conducts electrons or holes, you have to apply uh, the proper gate voltage to actually open up the channel. So for instance, here it's shown um, the electrical characteristics of an n-type or an electron channel uh, device, where, as you can see, uh, this is uh, varying the, the potential between the drain and source. And as you vary the gate, you basically allow the current to flow through the device so you can actually switch the device on and off by controlling the gate voltage. There is two regimes that you should be aware of operation. First is a regime where the current basically varies linearly with uh, drain source voltage. That is called, therefore, the linear regime. And there is a regime where the current actually doesn't vary that much and the current is, 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 is uh, said to be saturated. Um, this, this is another, another look of this. It's just like a cross section where you actually fix the drain source voltage and you, get, uh, you vary the gate uh, source bias. And these uh, types of, of uh, curves are called transfer characteristics. So what is important here is that uh, the current that flows through the channel um, it's proportional to three parameters. One of it, uh, that is the mobility of the semiconducting uh, layer that you're using, so that's a material property. Then it's proportional to the capacitance density that it's uh, basically, you, you choose that as a, as a um, um, design parameter on your transistor. And there is an engineering uh, ratio that you can uh, engineer basically to, uh, to get the currents that you want, which is just the ratio between the width of the channel and, the, and its length. So where we want to go, uh, I think Denise and Sam already said, uh, what we want to do is basically replace amorphous silicon. And um, to do that, we basically have to go uh, and get devices with uh, mobilities larger than one square centimeter per volt second. We also need to develop uh, the technology that allows to have N-channel and a P-channel uh, thin thin transistor so we can implement complementary electronics, which is basically the, the same kind of uh, engineering platform that it's in, in, in today's, uh, that drives today's electronic uh, components. So that, that's what we want. We want these devices to operate at very low voltages, to have a very stable operation, and obviously all the processing temperatures need to be low enough so they can actually uh, be processed into flexible substrates. So what I'm going to be talking today is actually on the use of uh, hafnium oxide, um, mainly uh, hafnium oxide uh, deposited by atomic layer deposition. And hafnium oxide is a, a very promising, actually, dielectric that it's, is now being implemented into MOS and into regular CMOS technology. So that, that is becoming the standard, actually, of, of the industry, because mainly because uh, it has a very large uh, dielectric constant that it's uh, between 15 and 20. I also, be, uh, so I'm going to be talking about uh, devices that have having uh, oxide um, gate dielectrics, 
and that uh, devices that uh, are solution processes from PCBM, evaporate devices from pentacin, and then I'm going to switch gears to talk a little bit about oxide uh, semiconducting TFTs. So just to give you a kind of an overview, uh, for those of you that haven't been around enough, uh, long enough in the STC, uh, in, the, in the previous year, a lot of, of our attention in terms of optimizing the properties of these devices has been concentrated basically at the interfaces. So to optimize uh, this switching uh, performance of the devices, it's critical that you select the proper um, metal uh, for the source and drain. It's also critical that uh, you look for gate electrics that will assure you that uh, to have a, a very high capacitance density, preferably with no uh, traps at this interface, or so preferably that uh, it will allow the, the semiconductor layer to have the proper morphology uh, to have a high mobility and, and low traps at this interface. And therefore, uh, most of the time, you actually uh, need uh, surface passivation of, of, of this interface between the gate electric and the semiconductor layer to actually achieve all these properties, uh, high mobility and uh, stability. So, Xia Hong Sang, uh, a former student of the group, actually did uh, a lot of the optimization uh, on uh, devices that uh, contain gate isolators, uh, aluminum oxide deposited by ALD. And basically the culmination of all, all her studies was the demonstration of, uh, of inverters on flexible substrate that basically contain uh, evaporated organic molecules. So P-type uh, P -type semiconductor pentacin and uh, N-type semiconductor C60. So as, as Dan, uh, uh, Sam already described, these inverters actually have very nice performance, they show uh, very large gain, so this is, this is actually the parameter that you want, want to optimize, and that, that is the gain, uh, that basically quantifies how sharp this transition is. But this also, actually, these devices also have very uh, nice lo uh, noise margins. And the noise margin is an engineering term that basically tells you how many of these inverters can you stack for, uh, to build uh, logic gates and things like that. So there are two things that you need to optimize in an inverter, is the gain and the noise margins, and both of these were uh, exceptionally good in, this, in these transistors. And uh, as, 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 as Sam already talked to you, uh, these actually performed quite well after um, bending. 